Hi, I'm Vince from Mr. Kitsune's VIP Game Lounge. I'm here to give a shout out to Janelle on today's video that we're going to do. That's right, really? So, uh, I'm Mr. Fox here, of course. Take your seat real quick. Uh, and today, we're going to do a playthrough of an, another retro game that's on the PS3 back here. It's really cool. Uh, this one's fully backwards compatible. And uh, today's game we're going to show you is Final Fight. We might have to break this into two segments, but we're going to do a complete playthrough for you. So today, me and my brother Vinny here are going to try and beat Final Fight. Here we go. <clears throat> So, uh, this is a re-release, actually. This is called Final Fight Double Impact. And it's called Double Impact because it actually has two games from Capcom released on it. The other one I will show you another day. So, uh, Final Fight Double Impact is a really fun game. I liked it. I think the other game on here is Magic Sword, but uh, anyway, moving on, we're going to start a new game. Oh, actually, I forgot, uh, so, we're going to start a new game, but I'm going to make it a custom game, so that I can do local instead of online, so that my brother can play too. We're going to leave the difficulty as medium, and go with a new game. So, uh, my brother's gonna press start to come in there. Now we can be Guy, Cody, and Hagar. Which guy do you want to be, bro? Uh, Orange guy, dude in white shirt, or Mr. Hagar? I'll be Cody. Uh, Alright, looks like it picks four of us. I'm Cody, and you appear to be Guy. So if you don't select your character in time, it picks automatically. But you get to switch characters when you die. And you can hit each other in this game, as I just demonstrated, so, you know, it's usually a bad idea to hit your partner, so try not to do that when you play this game. The square button is to punch, X jumps. This is food items you can eat to replenish your health. I'll let my brother get those since he has more damage. Cool. Alright, I found a beer. Great classic video games. Walk around, smash a trash can, find a beer. It's perfectly acceptable to just drink a beer you see lying on the ground. Oh, sorry, brother. Oh, look out for that. Yeah, there we go. This is the arcade version of Final Fight, which is really awesome. You see, back then, we really didn't have really cool uh, arcade-style graphics in our home console systems. Fun thing about this, actually, uh, which I'll have to explain in a few minutes, is that this game was released on the Super Nintendo, but it was changed dramatically from what it was in the arcade version. And one of the most notable things about it is that heroes shouldn't go around uh, beating up on women, so the female enemies you encounter in the arcade game actually were changed into men on the Super Nintendo version of the game, so that the heroes were only fighting other men instead of any female characters, which is kind of funny. So, uh, now this bad guy here, he's the boss, his name is Domo, and uh, he should call some of the girls into play that I'm talking about.
he calls in other guys to help him out. There she is. So this girl here that you see, her name is Roxy. And the Super Nintendo version of this game, uh, Roxy is not a girl. They changed her into a guy. Continue. Just press start to continue. There you go. So, uh, I'm gonna pick Hagar so my brother can be Cody. Hagar is a wrestler. He's pretty awesome. So, according to this story, Hagar is looking for his daughter who was kidnapped by the Mad Gear game. fighting in this one are not in the uh, Super Nintendo version, only the arcade version. You might see our little achievements popping up there. You have different challenges in this version that they gave yeah. you to try and complete, which is kind of fun. The best part of uh, playing a Tagar of course is that he can pile drive people, which I'll demonstrate. Tagar's awesome. He's like the best character in this whole game. There's also Final Flights 2 and 3, but those were only released on the Super Nintendo. And as far as I know, you don't have arcade rooms.
There's also a special Super Nintendo game called Final Fight Guide, which was actually only released in Japan. I think there might have been a US release too, but it's a very rare game to see. You could spend over $300 trying to get it. And that clears the uh, subway part. This is a bonus stage where you smash a car. things about this game is you'll notice that the different enemies you're fighting, even though they're not a boss, all the enemies you fight have their own individual life bar. I think this was the first game to actually do that. And it became really popular, so there were some other games, such as Streets of Rage, which I have another video up of actually, that would copy this later on. Another game that did this was Fighting Force, and that was on the PlayStation 1. the boss of this stage and then we'll take a short break.
ให้เพื่อใจสอดใจเราจะไTake a short break here, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, all. I am Mr. Fox, and we're back again. We're Mr. Kitchen's VIP Game Lounge. A few things I should explain here. Uh, games like this is interesting because they had a good backstory and. Story is very important when you're playing a game. So, the big guy I'm playing as, the wrestler, Mike Hagar's daughter, is kidnapped by the Mad Gear gang, according to the story here. Cody here is to rescue his girlfriend. Hagar's there because it's his daughter. And the orange guy, guy, well, he's just there because he's Cody's friend and he likes to beat people up. Now, Cody uh, likes fighting so much, he eventually gets arrested for it. Because he's fighting, and in the fight, he kills someone. And this is why in some of the later games with his character, like one of the Street Fighter games or uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, you see him with chains and he's in a prison outfit. He, the story behind that is that he broke out of prison to join the fighting tournament. And after he gets arrested for fighting and killing someone in a fight, his girlfriend, Mike Hager's daughter Jessica, actually breaks up with him. Anyway. That aside, let's go ahead and finish the video here, or the game rather. And here we go. This fire stuff just sucks. <laughs> Mike Hagar, Mike is his first name of course, is my favorite character to play in this game. It's nearly impossible to avoid the fire. But again, you have to remember that in games like this, they were designed to make you waste quarters and make as much money as possible. So, the old arcade games are designed, more or less, to make you lose. And you can clearly see that in this game. The fire and other things were toned down in the console version of this. experience with this game, people rarely played Guy. They usually only played Mike Hagar or Cody.
Those guys are firebombs. Sometimes I wonder where they got the names from these characters. Hollywood and whatnot. This guy here is actually called Relento, and he is harder to beat than the final boss. One of the things that sucks most about this guy is he also, as he starts to lose life, what he'll do is he'll start throwing grenades around and all kinds of other stuff. More or less, you're not going to beat this game without spending at least 10 or 15 dollars in the arcade. But then again, the arcade machines were designed to make money. Some of the truly skilled players could get pretty far on 2 or 3 dollars. And then he grenades himself to death. Beautiful. Only in boss I've seen in a game that actually suicides after you beat him. There's probably more that do that than just not aware of it. So we gotta break the glass here. It's one of the bonus stages. Now you have to hit it just right. If you don't, then you just spin the glass around and it hurts you. Alright, finish the bonus stage. And uh, the first bonus stage was the car, of course, and now you have the glass breaking stage. I think these are the only two bonus stages in the whole game. So pretty interesting though. And now we're in the Bay Area. I like to show off my blue glowy controller. I like the afterglow controllers, they're really awesome. Someone just, you know, left their dog there to bark at us and make noises while we're fighting bad guys. You think the dog would like just come out there, start fighting people, help the good guys, fight bad guys, but no, the dog just sits there and looks pretty. I guess in this game story, people just like to go to the park, leave their dog there, maybe they come back for it later, something. There should be somebody there with the dog, you know? Put another character just by the dog. So the dog's not there by itself. Alright, Coca-Cola. I want liquor. Alright, I got some yin. Even though we're like in an American city, we get to pick up Asian money. It works out. I think they're supposed to be in New York, actually. Because in the background, there should be a Statue of Liberty, I think. That art's a fictional city that looks like New York. 
And I think there's um, American looking money that you can pick up also, like pennies and dollar bills. Yeah, and it's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. It's smoking a plate. Some of them are doing a ton of jump. No, sometimes those obstacles surprise you. Alright, more yin. You know, if you really pile drive somebody on the cement like that, like so, they would not be getting up. <laughs> they would just die. Be like, roar, smash. Come on, Roxy. And the girl with the purple hair is poison. So what makes this interesting is that every character in the game, provided they have different colors and the other characters, of course, have different names, which is pretty neat. And kind of ambitious for a game as old as this one is. Some of these 2D side scrolling games are pretty interesting. Oh look, another random dog with no owner. Currently we're gonna fight in the uh, bathroom now. The stage has offered a lot of interesting variety in this game, which is pretty cool. This uh, guy with the radioactive symbol on his jacket always reminds me of Back to the Future, the yellow guys. The colored hair one kind of around the Britney Spears. Totally. From her uh, early music videos. <laughs> and you know, if you see that guy in the yellow, you'll notice there that he has a radioactive symbol on his jacket. And that's really funny, because every time I see that, I always think of Back to the Future. <laughs> I mean, all your food, bro. I'm gonna get you your own, too. Oh my god! Fuck! Oh my god. Sometimes the enemies can get caught in their own traps in this game, which is really cool. Now you'll notice that Cody says more after he's done fighting people sometimes. I never really understood why that happens, but it plays into his backstory. Like he likes fighting so much and yeah, he goes to prison because he kills somebody in a fight. Which, in some ways, doesn't make sense. I mean, here, they're basically killing all, a whole bunch of people. That or the people are just getting knocked unconscious, but... With a game like this, I really don't believe that's the case. Another thing I should mention, a good way to go through this game and like spend minimal continues and lines is even though you have a timer, move through the game as slowly as possible so that you're not fighting too many people all at once and this will let you get through the game. 
And also, if you're playing on the PlayStation or the Xbox 360, give you the achievement for getting through with minimal continuance. Here's your food, bro. Go eat your food. There you go. And the next level is to be the last one. And there's the Statue of Liberty there. So I think we're supposed to be in New York. Or there's a beam coming out of her? I have no idea. That's supposed to be the sun. Yeah, it probably is. It looks like the Statue of Liberty is pointing her torch at something and she's like making an explosion in the background. But she got really pissed off at somebody and she's blowing them up. Oh yeah, Abigail is one of the hardest bosses in the game too. Whenever me and my brother played this game, this is where we would always run out of continues, fighting Abigail. Well, not continues, but quarters. Another fun thing to mention about Capcom, uh, they got their name from NASA because Capcom was the name that NASA used and what it meant was capsule communications. Gives you something fun, some fun lore to know about the game. One other thing I like about this is you don't have to fight all of the end bosses again like you do in Streets of Rage when you reach the end of the game. You have to fight every boss that you fought again. Kind of ridiculous. I swear to God. Look at that guy's name, Bilbo. Yeah. Could be making fun of uh, Lord of the Rings Bilbo. No, they're making fun of the bald bull actually, which was in Mike Tyson's punch out. Uh, man, he's called the Bald Bull in my Tyson's uh, Punch-Out. Yeah. yeah, he does the bull charge. Yeah. Whoop, I uh, you know another, uh, the guy with the radioactive symbol on his suit? Also reminds me of another movie called Revenge of the Nerds.
The backgrounds are pretty well done in this game, too. Take a short break and I will be right back. Hello? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sounds good. Alright. No problem. Hello all, me and my brother are back again of course, after our short break. And now we're going to finish the rest of Final Fight. talking about Viper. And no, Viper is not that person. She's just uh, some assassin business girl or whatever. Is she Viper or is she crazy? You're talking about the girl that has a special suit that does different things? That's Viper. Mm -hmm. And she has long hair? Long hair. Yeah, that's Viper. some mean gangsters to have a building like this, jeez. They must have some mad money. These are not standard gangsters, seriously. Oh, 
honestly, if I was the villain of this game, I'd be starting to get really pissed off. What happened to all those guys I hired? They're getting defeated by two dudes? What the hell is going on here? I had a whole army of dudes! Kick him out the window. And the game ends. Oh, this is crippled now. <laughs> I love there's one of the villains. Oh, wait, no, that's the other guy. No, the, that's the orange guy. He's Cody's best friend. Of course, you save his daughter. Oh, father, I was so scared. I'm so glad to see they didn't hurt you. I'm so sorry, Jessica. I thought I'd lost you, like I lost your mother. I'll never let anything bad happen to you again. I love you, Father. And uh, here's the ending of the game. And there's the two friends. Cody, of course, is Jessica's boyfriend. He's the guy with the blue jeans. And his best friend is the guy, who's the guy in the orange there. It's kind of funny, he's like, Hey, I gotta go beat up these dudes. Gotta save my girlfriend. You win, this orange guy here is like, Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go kick some ass. And then, uh, Hagar is there to rescue his daughter, of course. It's terrible. He's the mayor, so he owns that damn building now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, oh, this guy's beating up his best friend. I think, no, I don't know, maybe Guy wanted to, wanted his girlfriend, I don't know, I was like, how dare you get the girl, I just came here and I get nothing, I just beat up a bunch of dudes for you, what the hell is going on here? No, he just knocked some sense into him. He beats him up, it's yeah. because, that's what bros do, just wail on each other for no reason at all, and of course they're supposed to have an epic kiss there or something, well anyway. I am Mr. Fox from Mr. Kitsune's VIP Game Lounge, and this was Final Fight. I hope you like seeing it. Fun game. If you ever get the chance, I recommend playing it. And this is Mr. Fox signing off. Thank you and good night.